Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is actually to create and set up the database, which is the back end that's going to store all of the content for the database. So I'm going to go to the Add Contacts link, and this will give you an idea of the kinds of things that we need to set up for the database. So it's always good to have a plan or a structure set up ahead of time so that you know what you need to do in order to set up the database. So I'm starting from the kind of data that is going to be stored in my application or in my contacts list. And we're going to have their email address, their first name, and their last name, their phone number, and also a reference to the image that's going to be used. So these are the things that we need to make sure that we have accommodations for in our MySQL database. So I'm just going to take a few notes here and write out the information that I want to be able to include in my database. Now first thing is you generally will have a primary key or a unique identifier. So my unique identifier in this case is just going to be an auto increment. So I'm just going to call it contact ID and it's going to be an auto increment which means the MySQL database will take care of adding one to the value every time we add a new contact. Then we're going to have the email and we also define the type of data that each of these fields are going to represent in the database. So this is going to be variable characters. So this represents you know, a list of variable characters. And then the same thing for first. It's going to be variable characters, last name, phone number. Even though it's a number, we're not using it to add, subtract, multiply, or divide. So still going to use a, a variable character. And the same thing with image. It's going to be the name of the image file. So we'll just uh, leave that as a variable character as well. This is basically the information that we're going to store for our database. And so next I'm going to go into my web host and find where I can set up my database. So I'm going to pause this and we'll come back in a second. So I have logged into my web host and this is going to vary greatly depending on the layout and setup of your particular web host. But somewhere in there is probably a link or a tab for databases and what you're looking for is MySQL database. This also has a, an icon and a link here right on my main portal page but yours may not be right there so you need to navigate around and find where that is. So I'm just going to click for a MySQL database right from my front page and you can see that I don't have any databases currently set up. So there's again uh, somewhere different depending on the layout and structure of your web host but there should be an option for create a new database. Now if you don't have these options it could be that your web host does not have that service available to you or it might be, ha it might be something that you have to pay extra for. So you want to check with your host to find out the specifics on where you go about getting access to a MySQL database or adding that service if it's not available. So on this one there's a create a database option over to the side that I'm going to select and I'm going to choose uh, my database name. Now this automatically uses, gives me part of my database name so I'm going to call this contacts. And this is something that you want to write down and because your database name and password is going to be something that's important that you're going to have to include in your code in order to be able to access it. So this is usually different than your login name and password for your control panel for your web host. So I'm going to copy that and make sure I keep that someplace else so that I don't forget about it. And then I'm going to type in my password and I'm going to choose add MySQL. 
end, you can see that I've successfully added a new MySQL database. And this gives me the option of coming in and if I messed it up or I want to delete it. Uh, but I want to come in and now start to set up my database. And you can do that with the PHP My Admin program. And again, this is something that most web hosts offer as a service. PHP My Admin gives us a visual interface for setting up our database. Now we can do that through code. We could write a PHP program and execute it to create the database. And we could also write a program to create our tables with our field information. But I find especially if you're beginning, it's easier to come in and visually create your database. Also gives you a good idea of how the database structure works and also a place that you can go in and check to make sure that things are working the way you think they should be. So I'm going to click here to go into my PHP My Admin program. Okay, now from the Welcome screen on the PHP My Admin program. We can see that here is my database name. What we're mainly interested in right now is editing and setting up a table within our contacts database. So I'm going to click on the link over here for my database name. And then you can see that we have the option here to create a new table. I'm just going to call it contacts. It doesn't have to be the same name as the database name. The information that's in this table are my contacts. So I'm going to say contacts. And now number of fields. And this is where having that list comes in handy. I can say, OK, I have this is one field. So each line in here is a field in my database. And it's easier when you do this setup at once, but you can go back and edit it later if you decide to add another field or to delete an existing field. But the best practice is to try to get it as close to the way it should be from the outset. So I have six fields that are in here as part of my database. So I'm going to put in six and it will create a structure for me to be able to start to enter this information. Now I'm just going to move my screen around, around a little bit so that I can have my table displaying over here with the information that we want to fill in. So let me pause this and adjust my screen. Okay, so now I can see my information on the screen at the same time. So my first field I'm going to put in here as contact ID. And it's going to be the type that I want is going to be an auto increment. So first of all, I'm going to come over here to extra and change it to auto increment. And it's going to be my primary key. The primary key means that uh, no two records in my database will have the same contact ID. And this should be an integer. So my primary key is an integer type. And I don't need to really change anything else in here. It's going to be auto increment, and it will take care of adding one to each time a new record is added. And I have it set up as my primary key. Next, I'm going to come in here and put in my other field name, so email. And this, is, again, is variable characters. And I, with this, you can see all the different types of data that we can have. So I'm just leaving these as variable characters and a length. I'm just going to put in 50 as a high-end value for that. And then for first name, we'll say 30. Always better to go on the high side a little bit. And phone, I'm just going to put in 15 to go a little above what would normally be a, a regular phone number length. And image. So image is going to stay as variable characters because it's going to refer to a file name and even a path. So it's going to be a text string. So I'm going to make this fairly large depending on, you know, we could have a pretty long image name or a path name to the image. So I'm just going to go on to the high end again for that. 
And if you get to this point, you've realized, oh, maybe I need another field. Um, you can add more fields and go. But we have the right amount here. So I'm going to click Save. And you can see here that it shows that it's been successfully created. It's added as a table within the database. And it even shows you the SQL query that was used to create that table. So if you're learning SQL, this can help you to see how it would, would have been generated. Now if we take a look closer down here, you can see that the primary key is underlined. So we know that you know, visually that's a primary key. And all of the other information for the structure of our table and if you need to edit something, you can click on the little pencil to edit them. If you wanted to drop, drop is to delete. So if we wanted to delete one of these rows or fields in our table, we could do that from here or change it to primary key uh, or other option in there. So now you can see that we have a table set up with all of our fields. Next, what I'm going to do is we're going to create a PHP script that is going to connect to our database and we'll learn to add a record to the database.